Folks, it's been a while since we've had a pretty spectacular failure, and uh, we got a good one for you today. This day started out great. This first section of, of road here, we got plowed up, scooped up, put in the dump trailer. I was making sure that I didn't overload it, that way I could dump it out, and turns out I way overloaded it. It wasn't even close. Do you know how much dirt weighs? Whew. Folks, how we doing? Welcome to Good Works Tractors. Broke out the skid steer today, got the 20 foot Diamond Seed dump trailer as well. We are gonna scoop up all this dirt so we can put in our road extension, our gravel road that we're doing. Gotta get this tackled down before it just becomes a mess. We still have to use this right now and can't or don't wanna drive over it with the, the fluffed up dirt and everything else. So we're gonna haul this all away in the dump trailer to the back of the property. Probably not to a spot I'm gonna use it right now, but at least just kinda of out of the way and out of the front of the property. I, I hate all this stuff. We got a big pile of dead trees that have been sitting there since before we bought it. I wanna get those out of here too. I just want to clean it up, you know? So this is this is step one to make this usable here. Connect both driveways together, and then we'll move on. Now I keep coming back to the skid steer just because it's, well, these are these are big jobs. It's a lot of dirt to move, even just three or four inches deep. You know, oh, 150 foot, maybe 200 foot. I don't know, not a super long connection, but still it's a lot of dirt. So I want to get it done quickly. You could definitely do this with a tractor bucket. It's really nice when you either use a tiller or a disc because it gives a, a hard bottom underneath there to kind of ride that bucket edge along and it doesn't want to dig down in and make it all uneven, just kind of scrapes and rides right along for the most part. Anyway, you'll see what I mean, I think, once we go into the actual project of it, so let's get to work. I'm not sure if you guys can tell, but we're doing something different today, shooting this entire video on an iPhone. Let me know what you think. We are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a ballast weight solution for your tractor. Liquid ballast is one of the most cost effective solutions, so it's hidden, it's out of the way, it gives you that extra stability you need when you're using the front end loader, it gives you safety to keep those rear wheels planted on the ground, and it gives you traction when you need it. Well, why RimGuard? It is a natural product that is going to be safe around animals and livestock in case you get a puncture and it leaks out. That means it's also going to be safe on your wheels as well. You know the old calcium chloride that'll rust those things out and ruin them. It is also the heaviest natural ballast weight on the market today and the most convenient, which is available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. So head on over to RimGuardSolutions.com to find a dealer near you. Alrighty folks, so moving this dirt is going like just clockwork, exactly what I want to do. Scraping up real easy, nice, consistent, flat bottom all the way across. Having the dump trailer here is fantastic. Quick to load that up. I'm trying to be conscious of putting more of the, the weight, the load towards the back end of it uh, compared to the front end where it's going to have to do more lifting. And, and I know that there's going to be a max capacity here at some point, but I didn't want to fill it up the whole way, you know, to, to overload it. So. Got it pretty well full there, and we got maybe, oh, I don't know, 35, 40% of the way done with our project here and wanted to take it on back and dump it out. And it's at that moment that our day went from good to bad. So, I, well, the first sign was the F-350. I don't want any of those snarky Chevy and, and Dodge comments, but the F-350 was struggling a bit to get around this turning up the hill. I had it in, in four, had the locking diff on, had it in four low, actually. Um, and it was it was struggling. I realized that's a lot of weight that we have back there. <clears throat> and so then we got back to the uh, the point where I wanted to dump it all out. All right, and hit that button to start raising up, and nothing happened. 
So we're gonna have to watch the video back and, and count how many bucket loads of dirt we put in there. I don't know if this is a one yard bucket, somewhere right around there, I don't think it says. C76, the Worksite Pro bucket. I can probably find that out online. <laughs> but we can see just how much weight we had in there and you can see just how overloaded we were, which I think was by a long shot. Now the estimates online say a yard of dirt weighs anywhere from 2,000 pounds up to 3,500 pounds, depending on if it's uh, uh, dry or wet and exactly what kind of dirt you have. Oh, I hate to even think of how much we had in there, but we never left our property. You know, the Ford made, made it all the way back there, I wanna say, and then made it back up a hill when I was backing down it. But what we had to do next to offload was a bit tricky. So the call to Diamond Sea was, well, I didn't get a straightforward answer on that. And a bit of that is because the lifting load is dynamic, right? It depends on where that weight is at, if it's back near the, end of, the tail end of the trailer or up near the front. The best that he could give me is taking the GVWR, which is 24,000 pounds, and subtracting about 8,000 pounds of the weight for that trailer, giving us 16,000 pounds of payload, which is, I guess, the amount that it can also lift up, potentially. Well, so we were in a bit of a pickle because I didn't want to leave that trailer full of dirt sitting there, and I wanted to get this job done, you know, the driveway scooped out, but I needed to get this figured out. So what we decided to do is get on pretty level ground, you know, chalk that thing up, emergency brake, everything else, put the hydraulic jack stands down, and then start start peeling what we could, which was not very far with the skidster. You don't have much reach, but start peeling that dirt out of the back of the trailer. And we tried it periodically all throughout this to see if the if the uh, the jack would start raising up and dumping or not. But ended up having to pull the ramps out, and I know the skidster fits in there just barely, like like a half inch on each side of each track but basically I had to climb up in there and just start scooping everything out and and thankfully it did fit in there otherwise it would have been in in a real bad spot and it was just a matter of repeating that process and and so we finally had the majority of that dirt out of there it had probably taken out i don't know 75 percent of the dirt and it started to lift up so we thought we were out of the woods at that point so we're going to back this thing up and dump it out raise it the whole way up and <laughs> and nothing comes out everything is just like i think stuck in there like glue from being driven over with the skid steer and we try to chisel at it and chip away at it with a shovel and nothing's moving so we're starting over from square one again go back to our our flat area set it all up again drive the skid steer up in there and just scrape all of it out at that point and you know that's how we got it done it was a real pain in the butt so anyway i don't know what you can really learn from this situation there's a there's a limitation to what your dump trailer can pick up but there's no indication, I can't even get a real straight answer out of the manufacturer on that. So it's, it's just trial and error. But in my case, it was, well, reality completely different from the perception that I had looking at that trailer. If you looked at that trailer and thought you could just fill it full of whatever you wanted and dump it out, that wasn't the case. And now a, a shorter sided trailer, well, you're, you know, you're not gonna put as much weight in there to begin with, plus the trailer's gonna weigh less. So that ratio there is gonna be a lot more in your favor. But in my case, it was the opposite. So you have two different limitations with the trailer. One is gonna be a volume limitation, what you can physically put in there, no matter how much it weighs, right? And then the other one is a weight limitation, which can be completely different than volume. You know, if you have just light mulch, you know, you can stack that all the way to the top and you're probably not gonna have any issues, but you can't stack it all the way to the top with dirt or stone because it's gonna exceed that weight limitation. So that's our lesson for the day. Didn't plan on learning that today, but that's how it goes. I want to get this done. I am not using that trailer. I already unhooked it. I'm done with that for the day. I realized I do want to plant some stuff right back here uh, by the ponds up front anyways, and it's lacking on topsoil. So I think that's my excuse. That's what I'm going to do to just kind of shove it all there and I'll spread it out later on. Uh, that's what I'm doing now. I got to finish that job up. I want to thank you for stopping by. Maybe you learned something today. Maybe you just got a good laugh at me. Either way, I appreciate it. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button right down below. And if you're in the market for something for your tractor or your skid steer, you know, stuff to go on the loader, grapples, buckets, forks, all that kind of stuff, three-point hitch on your tractor. We'd love to help. We sell and ship all over the country. Check out goodworkstractors.com. I want to thank you for stopping by and do stay safe. I want to thank you for stopping by. Do stay safe. I want to... <laughs> I was trying to do something different. I can't do it. I was trying to, but I'm not. I want to thank you for stopping by and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.